Hello, in this presentation we will put together a budgeted balance sheet within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been following along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We will put together a budgeted balance sheet within QuickBooks Pro. If you have the backup up to this point, you can restore that by going to the File and Restore. We're going to have the open windows open in this section by selecting the view tab from the drop down and open window list. We also want to have the home page open as it is here. You can find that at the company and home page. Up to this point, we have put in data for uh, the first two months of the year we, we will be working in, which is 2021. And we're going to put together a balance sheet in this case in terms of a budgeted balance sheet. Now, to come up with the numbers for the balance sheet, we won't go into depth on that. We're just going to look on how to input the balance sheet. Remember, when you do a budget, the income statement is really kind of the performance statement you're looking at. So when we're looking into the future, we're typically thinking how much revenue are we going to have and how many expenses are we going to have. The balance sheet you can think of as the end result at that end point in time after we're done with that. So that's kind of how you would think about how you would get to that end point, that end balance sheet. The income statement is really that performance document on how we're going to do over a certain time period so what we're going to do is we're going to put the balance sheet in there as of the end of the quarter the end of the next month uh, as of the end of march is going to be our budgeted balance sheet how would we come up with those numbers we'd have to look at our our balance sheet before that time period we'd have to consider what the budgeted income statement is going to look like and then what the result then will be on the balance sheet if, you know, what we thought was going to happen in terms of performance, in terms of income actually did happen. In other words, if the sales actually happened, how much cash would we get and how much receivables would we get? How much do we expect we're going to collect in cash from prior sales that were make on, made on account? Uh, the payable side is going to be much the same. So we'd have to do a bit of an analysis in order to figure out that point in time. We're not going to get into too much de depth in terms of how to put the numbers together. What we're going to do now is figure out how to get those numbers into QuickBooks so we can run some reports on them. So in order to put the balance sheet within QuickBooks, we're going to go to a company and we're going to go down to uh, planning and budgeting and we're going to set up budgets. So we're going to set up the budget and we already have this time the profit and loss budget. What we want to do is create a new budget now. So I'm going to create a new budget up top. And we're going to change the date to the, to the year we're in. It's 2021. And then change this from the profit and loss, the income statement type budget, to the balance sheet type budget. And then we're going to say next and finish here. So now we have a list of our balance sheet accounts. And we're going to put the balance sheet as of March. So we're going to make our budget as of March and put in our budgeted numbers. Like I say, I'm going to pull these budget. I'm just going to give the budgeted numbers that we can see as we put them in there. Uh, the way I would work out an actual budget is put the stuff into Excel and work through the budget uh, in terms of what we expect to happen uh, and then put it into QuickBooks. And the reason we ultimately want to put it into QuickBooks is because QuickBooks can run those reports very easily for us once we have the budget in place. And once the actual numbers happen, once the month passes, in other words, QuickBooks will help us run a comparison very easily. So in, in rather than us having to export it to Excel and it compare it to the budget, uh, QuickBooks can run at least some reports very quickly by inputting the budget. So we may want to do the budget outside of Excel in order to plan the budget, think about the numbers, figure out what's going to happen, and then uh, put those numbers into Excel. Or we might want to use Excel or, we, or then put those numbers into QuickBooks, I should say. <laughs> Or we might want to use QuickBooks for a fairly uh, simplified planning budget that we can put together pretty easily based on the last time periods and then and use the, the features within QuickBooks to allow us to plan out in the future as well as make some comparisons. So we have our accounts here. We're just going to input uh, the data now. Remember, I am in, remember that I am in uh, March here. So we're starting off in March. We're going to say cash 97133. We're going to say accounts receivable is 9949. Inventory assets are 1712. Uh, prepaid insurance 10083. Short term investments, we don't have any. We're going to say that uh, the undeposited funds 4500. 
Uh, we're going to say the accumulated depreciation needs to be a negative. So make sure it's a negative. It's a contra asset account. Furniture and fixtures is going to be 103. And then accounts payable. I'm going to skip down to accounts payable, which is going to be 1450. The visa uh, account is going to be 1000. Interest payable, I'm going to say is zero. Loan payable, 1654. Uh, pay payroll payable, I'm going to keep at zero. Sales tax is going to be 100. Loan payable, 56769. And draws, we'll keep at the 100. And so that the total equity then uh, should balance out. And obviously, when we're making this, we should assets should equal liabilities plus equity. And so I've kind of worked this out. So it should be 146.620 if we put everything in there correctly. So I'm, I put that in there fairly quickly. Note that we're, we're talking about a point in time here. So we're just talking about a point in time when we're thinking about the balance sheet. So we're just going to enter this data as of the end of the next month or the end of the quarter. That being the next point in time we are looking into. And this is going to be the activity. So if you put these numbers in then we can save this and what we will do is then run some reports based on these numbers or you can see it a bit better here so once this has been input then we're going to say okay we'll save it for and let's make sure we save it and then say okay it should save once we say okay but and then we're going to go up to reports up top we're going to run those same reports. We're going to go to, except for this time, of course, we're going to run them for the balance sheet as last time. We did them for the profit and loss. And we're going to scroll down to the budget and performance. So budgets down here. We're going to look first at the budget overview. Once again, the budget overview. We're going to want the balance sheet. There's two now. We're, we want to make sure that we are on the balance sheet. Next and finish. So here is our budgeted balance sheet. We have our date range for the entire year, but we only have data, of course, in March. That's the only time that period that we put data into. So let's uh, narrow the date range to 030131 to, uh, sorry, 21, January 1st, 2021 to 033121, March 31st, 2021. And I'm going to narrow it even further and make it March 1st to March 31st. So March 1st, 2020, uh, 2021 to March 31st, 2021 will give us our balance sheet here. So now we have our balance sheet, our budgeted balance sheet. Let's see if it is indeed in balance. Note it's not. It's not in balance, meaning the total assets do not equal the liabilities plus equity. This is a common problem when we make the budgeted balance sheet and not a common problem when we make the normal balance sheet when going through the process of generating the information through QuickBooks. Why? Because when we make a normal data entry, the QuickBooks system will not let us be out of balance. So the double entry accounting system is a bit complex. It's not easy to do and always be in balance, but the QuickBooks system is a, has a huge check in that normally it forces us to be in balance. However, when we do the profit and loss balance sheet, we don't have that check. It doesn't force us to be in balance. So we have to go in there and say, okay, so something was input incorrectly. So I'm going to go back to my data file and say, what was input incorrectly? How can I go in and fix this? Something is clearly wrong and see what that difference is. If you're too creating a budget, if you're creating the balance sheet budget, then uh, you should try to roll over the income statement. And oftentimes the difference then is going to be in uh, this equity section so this equity section is often the place where you'd you'd want to make the adjustment but we can talk more about that at a later time in any case to fix something you can go back to the budget so we're going to go to the uh, company and we're going to go to planning and budgeting and we're going to go to set up budgets again and i'm going to scroll down to and i'm looking at the balance sheet is what we we're in in the drop down and i'm going down to march now i think it's the long-term loans payable so here we had the loans payable of the one six and that's actually the payroll liabilities so the long-term loan payable should be one eight one oh nine and the payroll liabilities should be one six five four 
So that's the change I'm going to make here. So we're going to make this change, loan payable, 18109 and payroll liabilities 1654. We're going to go ahead and save that and go back in and see if, if that fixes the problem, hopefully. We're going to say OK. And if we go back, we've got 225.602 and 225.802. We're still off by $100, or we're off by $200. And I believe that's the draws down here. It's going to be the draws. Uh, usually, QuickBooks likes to report that as a negative number in the equity section, and we have it as a positive number. So if I flip that to a negative number, that should be the difference. So let's go ahead and do that and see if that's the case. We're going to go to company up top. We're going to go to budget and planning and set up budgets once again. And we'll scroll down to this 100 in the draws. And we're going to make that a negative 100. Oop. Let's do that one more time. Company financials. We're going to go down to the budget and planning. And we'll make that a negative 100 right there. Once we do that, we're going to save it and OK. And then we have this negative 100. And so we're at 225602 and 225602. So we're tied out now. We are in balance. Looks like the budget uh, is functioning. Looks like it is working. So we are going to go ahead and print this out now or save it, export it to an Excel file, the same Excel file we started last time when looking at the budgeted profit and loss. We are going to say export Excel and create a new worksheet we're going to put it however into an existing workbook so we'll put it into an existing workbook we're going to browse to find that workbook and select the drop down go to get great guitars section 11 is where we're going to put it into the section 11 reports so i'm going to double click on that and we will then export so we're going to export and it should then open up Excel. It should export this data to Excel and then um, give us a new tab on our worksheet. Once it does that, we're going to rename that tab. We're going to put that tab in the section that we want it to be in and possibly do some editing here. So here's the tab. I'm going to pull it to the outside, double click on it, change the name. We're going to call it, uh, balance, call it balance sheet budget. And there is that. We're going to go to the, um, let's go up to the view tab up top. In the windows group, we're going to unsplit the panes. And that's it. That's basically what we have. We can check to see that the header is there. We're going to go to the page layout. We do have the header there, so that looks good. If we go back to the normal. It looks like it's printing all on one uh, column. That is good. So let's go ahead and save this and then close this out. And then we'll create the other common uh, budget report and that's going to be at reports up top. Scrolling down to the budgets and going to the budget versus actual. Budget versus actual. We want the balance sheet. So we're going to keep that and say next and finish. And once again, I'm going to change the dates because we only have that one month that we're looking at. So it's going to be 03, uh, 012121, 03, 31, 21. Now you'll recall that we stopped entering data in our problem at the end of February. So these numbers in March are actually the same numbers at the end of February because the balance sheet accounts are permanent accounts. And so that's where we were at in the, ba in the balance sheet. And then we have the budgeted amounts. That's the amounts that we just entered in terms of the budget. Then, of course, we have the difference here. If we take out our calculator, we're going to calculate this out percent of budget to see what it is doing here. That's going to be the 98995.56 divided by the 97133, meaning what actually happened divided by the budget is 1.01 if we make that a percent i can multiply that times 100 that's going to be 101.9 percent so we're saying that the actual number is 101.9 percent of the budgeted number so that's going to be uh, this information here we have the similar comparison 
in terms of uh, the making the differences and in terms of the ratio analysis from the budget to the actual. We'll scroll down just to show the entire report. So there's going to be the entire report here. What we will do now is uh, export that to our Excel worksheet once again. So we'll go to the reports up top. We will we'll go to I'm sorry Excel up top, and we're going to create a new Excel worksheet. And we're going to put it to an existing workbook. Locate that workbook. Browsing. There's the workbook. Section 11 reports. Selecting that item. We're then going to export it. It's going to open up Excel. It's going to put this information into a new sheet within Excel. And uh, we are then going to put that information into the format that we want. Adjusting the name to the tab adjusting the view screen on it here is the report i'm going to drag the tab to the right so it's the last report here double click on it and i'm going to call that the balance sheet um, budget versus actual and then go to the view tab up top windows group unsplit the panes Double check that uh, the, the header is there by going to the page layout view. Scrolling up, there's the header. Back to the normal view. Looks like it's printing on one page. That looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Close that. And that's going to be it for the budgeted balance sheet.